All right, so uh, this week's lecture is going to be on the 3-3 uh, three, three invasion. Um, we're going to start out mostly with uh, just... <laughs> I tried to get audio earlier. Seriously, KGS, you know, they have this bureaucracy or something. I had to send like a dozen emails over a month for them to actually give me audio capabilities. I'm a KGS Plus member and everything, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's behind us. They happily gave me audio, and I won't complain. So... 3-3 Invasion. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, just some basics in terms of uh, basic Joseki and then a few variants on the basic Joseki, uh, dealing with just the 4-4 the four, four point and if you invade the 3-3 three, directly. And then from there we're steadily going to get into uh, slightly more complex situations. We're going to get into uh, how to invade your, how the 3-3 three, three Invasion works if uh, their, your opponent's corner is a little more defended, uh, how you can invade and make use of your 3-3 three, three stone, even if it can't live directly, how, how to use its Aji as, uh, as best you can. And uh, then we're going to end with a look at some really, really crazy things you can do about the 3-3 invasion. We're going to take a look at a few different professional games to see when pros really, really don't like the 3-3 invasion and, and they want to try and kill it. The crazy techniques that uh, they will attempt to uh, kill the move and what moves you should only attempt if you are willing to gamble the game on uh, your attack. <laughs> very, very dangerous moves in other words. But, uh, so starting off, we're just going to uh, start off with the basics. So, obviously, yeah, last part should be very fun. Um, last part especially is uh, some of the games I, I picked out some really, really interesting ones to see just uh, the kind of crazy techniques pros will, uh, uh, pros will try and do against one another. <laughs> Alright, so, so, obviously basic 3-3 invasion. And we have this very simple, very generic Joseki that I hope most of you have seen hundreds and hundreds of millions of times, at least, in all your games. Uh, most everyone learns this uh, very quickly after playing the 4-4 point, because it happens very, yes, yes, very, very, very often. So, everyone knows this basic thing, and many players, many Q players especially, will just uh, play this generically whenever uh, the 3-3 the happens. Yeah, whenever the 3-3 is invaded, they play this, and sometimes this can be a great result. <laughs> and sometimes this can be a great result, actually. Uh, but sometimes it's not the best Joseki uh, you can play here. So, well, you know, one of the obvious advantages for this for Black is Black gets extremely thick shape on the outside. He has a very strong shape. White has nothing to cut. Black has great eye space. White, on the other hand, White gets a solid maybe 8 to 10 points in the corner. And White gets Sente, which is incredibly important. Um, this last move, uh, some players, uh, obviously white should, uh, P15. Oh, yeah, of course, no, that's, uh, <laughs> not quite, but, uh, so now we're gonna look at a, a few variants that, uh, black can try if black wants a slightly different result. For instance, black is very, very thick here. However, black does end in gote, and sometimes there's a point on the board that's just so critical that you just really, really need to get, and no matter how thick this is, you just don't want to end in Gote. So, one variant, going back here, at this point, yes, is 017. You may have seen this in uh, some of uh, the games that you've seen. This is a, a great move for uh, taking Sente if you want. The, the standard white response is 018, and now, and this is a critical, now white can, or black can actually Tanuki here, if black has some sort of uh, critical point uh, elsewhere on the board. Sometimes you can play N18, but uh, in general, you don't need to play N18 yet. It kind of defeats the purpose. So Black then plays his amazing move elsewhere. And if White wants to continue attacking Black's group, any ideas for uh, what White, how White should uh, continue this? How should White continue? N17, sure. And then Black will extend up. And now White? Yep, M18. Very simple. So this gets him out, and uh, Black's shape is uh, substantially weaker than uh, the initial variation, of course. And uh, White has escaped into uh, the center and taken some points on the side. So, you know, White's not exactly sad about uh, his results. But that being said, Black has gotten a critical sente to play where he needed to. So if that sente was important enough, then this is a fine variant for uh, you to remember to play. But let's say White tries something different in response. Let's say Black plays 017, and now... White's going to bump up against it, and then White plays 018. So, the question is, now what does Black do? Does Black Tanuki here? Does Black have a better move? Any ideas? 
And anyone, feel free to chime in. All right, we have uh, one suggestion for Tanuki. Some people uh, saying N S17. Mm, all right, so uh, uh, Tanuki. So Tanuki is possible here. You can consider the doing a Tanuki, but uh, Tanuki often isn't the ideal choice here. Um, yeah, N17 is a pretty uh, uh, generic response. And we can't say it's terrible for black. In fact, it's play perfectly playable for black. Right, exactly. That's the problem. I mean, the whole purpose of black taking O17 was for, you know, black to get sente. And black doesn't get good sente here. So uh, we, we can't say that this really, this kind of defeats the purpose of black playing the O17, even though it's not a terrible variation. The point is black wants, or, uh, uh, black wants to get sente as uh, easily as possible. So... Black's move, so some people suggested a S17. That's not a, maybe not a terrible choice. Uh, it says uh, N18 is nonsense. Joseki says N18. When, when is a N18 nonsense? It's White's choice. No, 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 no. It's not White's choice whether uh, uh, Black gets sent to here. It's Black has to find the right move here to uh, make sure he gets sent to. So yeah, if black plays N17, he's not going to get Sente, so that's why it's not the ideal choice. So this move, I mean, what uh, white's going to end up doing is just something like this. And uh, black can get re good reduction in the corner, I suppose, but, uh, well, it can actually get pretty complex. For instance, if this happens, and then if black tries to get fancy, then uh, you get this. And, uh, you know, it can get really complicated from here, black can try this. White can move out here, we can get uh, more variations. So S17 can lead to some really weird variations. S17 is interesting. Um, I mean, black can also consider this, corner stealing, which isn't necessarily terrible, but... And this is nice, because white ends up lumpy, and black steals the corner, but uh, once again, you know, black can't really say he ends in sente here. But there's a really, really simple variation, actually, that white has, or the black has, to ensure he ends in sente, and it actually looks counterintuitive at first. P18. P18 looks cool, but no, P18 doesn't quite work. Uh, this is just going to happen. And let me black and get some corner reduction. M17. So, O16. O16 isn't a terrible choice. Actually, you have the ex you have the right idea here, but uh, White's gonna play here, and if Black Tanuki's, well, Black can Tanuki here, I suppose, but White can get M16, which is great for him. So this isn't this actually O16. I'll give it uh, maybe seven points out of ten. O16 is the right idea, seven points out of ten. But uh, actually, the technique we want here, and it may look a little counterintuitive, is N18. Now, this looks silly, because when there's three stones in this, well, let's see, well, white, if white looks and reads and says, oh, well, I can capture N18, and in fact, black can't even capture, yeah, Joseki Tudor says this is nonsense. Nonsense for who? The question is nonsense for which side? This is not a good result, no, this is, this is not a good result for uh, white, usually. Now, Joseki Tudor is based off of Kogo's Joseki Dictionary, and Kogo's Joseki Dictionary has quite a few flaws in it. So, anyway, this is what we can expect to happen. Well, watch what happens. Black will go here, and if white decides to play M17, black can get this cut. White obviously has to respond. Now, P18 can't escape, but black can get this leaving black for a critical sente that uh, black wants to take elsewhere. In this case, I mean, you know, Q10 would be fantastic. So this usually isn't that amazing for white. White has ended up with, you know, six, seven, eight points, and a, a fair wall, a strong group, but uh, his stones are really over-concentrated. And if black manages to get S18 later, that's, that's huge, Jose. So we, we can't say white is really thrilled with this result. Now, let's say for the sake of argument, white wants to prevent that. So he just goes like this. 
and then black can take this point. And if black wants, sometimes uh, as L17 is good, or sometimes black can uh, tanuki like this. And once again, we, we can't say white is thrilled with the result. I mean, white isn't terribly off, but uh, black is very happy to have uh, built himself a moyo. Ideally, you'll want a, a stone at Q10 in advance before doing this. So you'll have the ability to play another stone here, maybe O10, or another move to assist. Yeah, there are better Joseki for white. Absolutely, this isn't Joseki for white. Wait, white descends at uh, S17? When? At what point should white descend at S17? Right here, or earlier, or later? After the capture. So, what? Like. Right here? Right after the capture here? I mean, S17 isn't a horrible move. Okay. But uh, depending on the board, if black can make a position on the, the top left, this can be a really powerful move for uh, beating up white's corner. Uh, depending on what's going on in the top left. But uh, even if that's not, you know, black isn't necessarily really depressed to take this move. I mean, uh, so white makes a little more points at the corner, black's wall becomes thicker. Uh, so white still isn't really thrilled with this result. And remember, ideally, if we're playing this variation at all, you know, black already wants to have a stone at Q10 before he does this. I mean, uh, that, that's the ideal. That now black can play another move with his, uh, with his sente if white defends uh, N18. Oh right, white shouldn't do this. That's why white fails to play. That's why white does not play p17 and goes straight to o7, o18. This is why white does not play p17 because all those variations end up doing is making white a modest size corner and giving black usually giving black sente. I mean, in theory, white can sometimes take back sente, but his corner is just going to be scrunched so small. And black's going to become so thick around it. I mean, you know, in any situation, it's possible to take sente if you're willing to give up enough points. If you're willing to give up enough, you can take sente. But uh, the main point is, it's not it, white cannot keep sente and get a reasonable result, generally speaking, if he does the, the P17 variation and black does the double honey, like we saw. So O17 is a very useful move to know. Uh, another classic one, unless you're Lee Sedol, you can make all the exceptions you like for 9 pros. Okay, I'm, I'm not talking about them. Now, another variation I hope everyone here is familiar with is uh, doing the double hane a little bit earlier, which is a very common one that most people learn and like to play with immediately and think it is the, the greatest, most amazing joseki uh, dropped off the face of the earth. But, uh, and uh, what usually happens is uh, white will cut here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this happens. And most people love the thought of taking the corner back as black after white invades it. And sometimes this can be a great joseki for black, sometimes. But it really, really depends on the situation. If you play it in the wrong situation, all it's going to do is give white really strong shape in sente. I mean, white is, uh, in general, white's, you know, not exactly sad here. Black has made himself, you know, a fairly sized corner. But uh, white has a panuki, which is very strong shape, of course. And white has sente. Q18 better than Q18 better than O18. Oh, Q18 better than O18. Oh, this move. <laughs> this is uh, this is something of a trick play, I think. Um, this can lead to some really really interesting variations. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I was reading it. It's not really a new book. Well, he had a lecture on the concept a, a while ago. Um, so yeah, I, I've read a, I've read about the move. It's, he was testing it for a little while. Um, I think he ended up concluding that it wasn't ideal. Um, my understanding was that the response for white, and correct me if I'm mistaken, the response is the response for white is just uh, to do this, and uh, white can usually end up with a playable result. Oh, 18, yeah, oh, 18. If you have a ladder. Yeah, ladder of course would uh, make that much easier. But if you don't have a ladder, this uh, this work seems to work out all right for uh, for white, or at least some kind of trade. 
anyway. Yeah, you know, so the double honey here. Now let's say white wants to prevent that. Well, white can demand to keep the corner. But uh this uh isn't gonna end well. Depending if black has the ladder or not, black can play either N eighteen or N seventeen, and now white needs another move if uh he wants to live in his corner. And black is uh usually pretty happy to have obtained such uh, external thickness. Now here's a good question. Uh let's say white does not play another move. And now it's uh, black to play and kill white's corner. Any ideas? Ah, S18, yes. Perfect. P19, not quite. I don't think that works. S18, yeah. That's a great way to kill. And then uh, white will go like this. And that'll do it. Not really uh, anything white can do here to live. Uh, this is a good one to know. Black to play. Any ideas? Black to play? Yep, T18. Right. T17 here is a big mistake, but a very easy one to make because it shows up the 2-1 po the two one points evil. If uh, black tries T17, uh, Ko emerges, and white can suddenly manage to live by Ko, which is very annoying actually. Always uh, annoyed me when this happened. Right. So these are the, the basics of, uh, you know, the, the most basic uh, variations you'll see with, uh, it changes every five minutes. Um, sorry. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's the microphone. Or maybe, is my voice really changing every five minutes? That, that would, that would be bad. Oh, okay. Okay, good. All right, so let's uh <clears throat> ah all right, so let's look at a few other variations. So what uh, happens here, and uh, any Don players we have in the room, uh, let some of the Q players answer. <clears throat> what happens if White attempts a three-three invasion here? What is the expected result? Code live. Yep. Ah, uh, Gote life. I don't think it's uh, supposed to be Gote life. Co for life. Now this confuses a lot of people when they first see it. For why it has to be Co. But uh, if we look into it, Black's obvious move is uh, Q17. And then White takes this move. Well, it's just a matter of uh, reading out the variations and knowing what variations are possible and what variations aren't. Um, it's a rule here. Yeah, S18 is next. <clears throat> and now here, if uh, Black attempts to kill off the eyes, White takes R19 and uh, co forms. But let's say, for the sake of argument, Black is going to say, you know, I, uh, I don't think you can make life in there. I'm going to try and uh, kill you outright. Well, one idea that uh, has uh, confounded players time and again is this move, which is uh, basically Black, uh, white say, uh, Black saying, I am going to kill you. Uh, it can be a very frustrating move. So, any ideas as a white how to respond to such a move? As white? S17. Ah, okay. And now? R19? Q19. I see. So, white can't make two eyes inside anymore, but the question is, can white break outside? Well, P17, yeah. P17 will do it. Well, to beat, to beat that, you just have to play this move first. And then white, uh, black has to defend here. And then white does this. <clears throat> and uh, there's no way for black to really uh, make this end well. I mean, even if black manages to defend this stone, white can just do this. And escape from the corner. So black can't kill him outright. But the thing you have to be aware of is that this is delicate. This kind of, kill, this kind of way to escape is delicate. So if black maybe has you know, one more extra stone somewhere... 
if, uh, for instance, you know, maybe black has uh, already has two of these on two sides, and uh, white attempts the same thing. Well, now it's a, a very, very different situation. We play out the same moves, but now when he does this, there's no cutting point. Uh, O17 is playing the perfect move to uh, stop that cutting point, and white dies. So this uh, this kind of killing variation, when it's just the star point and uh, these uh, knights jump, when it's just the star point and the knights jump, and white attempts the 3-3, it should be ko usually. But it's a delicate ko, in that if there's, you know, one more move nearby, if there is maybe, you know, let's say uh, a move at uh, S13, if there's a move over here, if there's, you know, it, it's a very delicate ko. If there's another move helping, it might not live. And so when you get stronger and when you can uh, begin to read out 10, 15 moves easier, you know, you should be very, very aware of, uh, and if you're playing a slow game, you should be very, very aware of these kinds of extra, of this variation, in particular the, the S16 attempted kill move. The normal co situation, instead of the normal co, you should always be make sure to read out what happens. Yeah, I want to be stronger too. <laughs> you should always make sure to read out, you know, what are any excess stones going to do about uh, this S16 move? Will they make it work? So, always good to know. Just for reference, if uh, white attempts to live like this, it doesn't work out very well because black just instantly kills like this and there's not really much of a debate on it anymore. So that was the first one. <laughs> Submarine always. So looking at the next one. This one. So what is it? Uh, white invades the 3-3 three, three point. Do we have Seki? Do we have Ko? Do we have Outright Life? What do we have? White lives. I see. Any other ideas? I think life. Gote life. Table flip. Table flip is a great move. Yeah, the double knight's enclosure is inefficient, and you shouldn't play it. The, usually the knight's enclosure and the diagonal. I'm just saying it because the, the double knight's enclosure has a lot of uh, complications to it. Even though white can't live directly, there's a lot of really tricky things that can go on in there, and a lot of uh, delicate situations inside. So yeah, the best way of doing it is a diagonal and a knight's jump. But, uh, okay, so yeah, no table flips. Yes, thank you, Frozen. I'm, I'm sure you had to struggle with this problem greatly. <laughs> so, now, uh, so here we have a situation. No, 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 Frozen, I'm just being sarcastic with you. You're, you're more than welcome to answer. Just uh, wait for everyone else to answer first. <laughs> okay, so black goes here. Now it's uh, white to play. Any uh, Should white just uh, continue on with R16? Does white have any other moves you could try? We have uh, one idea for Q18. Any others? We have one idea for S16. One idea for S15. One idea for R15. One idea for D4. Okay, we're talking locally, obviously, Rukas. S18. All sorts of funky moves. Well, there seems to be a lot of debate on uh, this move, and yet only one of these moves is the designated proper move. You know, every other move is, uh, generally speaking, the wrong move. So let's uh, let's go through e each of these and see uh, which one is uh, really the best choice. So, starting off with uh, S15. Hmm? Yes, frozen A and B are the most common usually. So starting off with the slide here, sometimes there are special moves, sometimes there are special techniques you can do with this if you just want to live on the right side. But the problem with usually doing this is, uh, you know, at the minimum, black can do this. And, you know, maybe white can uh, make life on the right side and it won't end up terribly for him. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, black still keeps the corner. So th we can't really consider this a, a truly successful corner invasion for white. White's kind of giving up the corner for the side, which is sometimes okay. But there's usually a way to uh, take more of the corner with you instead of this. Uh, D, this is a, an interesting peep. If, uh, if black just defends, of course, white is thrilled. 
white will do this, but this is very bad for black to do. Instead, uh, black should just be more aggressive and do this. And so once again, we have a very similar situation. You know, maybe white can do something to manage life on the right side, but at the end of the day, he's still giving up the corner, and uh, white is a uh, or black is uh, still relatively happy with the result. Now, S18 is actually a really interesting shape move. There are some uh, very interesting life and death problems that uh, use S18, but uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, the ideal move here. Hmm, it's interesting. I'm not entirely positive the best response to it. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, S16. Yeah, that seems like uh, the best option here. Mm, yeah, that seems fine. Yep, shape point. So, yeah, it's very difficult for uh, White to manage to live here. Yeah, I mean maybe if uh, White goes here and then pushes in here, Black now has a choice. Black can try and be insane and do S. 15 to try and kill it, which may be futile. Yeah, it, it can live, and but it can live, but very, very tiny. So, I mean, it lives, but we can't say this is the best life. It, it's very painful life. Yeah. it's uh, So, we can't say S18 gets a 0 out of 10, but maybe a 4 or a 5 out of 10. So, now we have a Q18, which is a... Sometimes you only need four points, but uh, yeah, you know, if uh, you have a choice between four points and uh, more than four points, you know, usually you take the one that's more than four points. <laughs> Why take four when you can take six? Yeah, so this is going to usually end up making Ko again. And the problem with this is, you know, white can do better than Ko. Now, sometimes Ko has advantages, but uh, that's a topic for another time. But uh, yeah, this, this usually isn't the ideal move that you want to do. Yeah, Ko is fun. I, I like Ko too. But in actuality, this is the proper move, as, even though it looks a little bit weird at first. If you try and do the generic move, like uh, R16, it's uh, still going to end up as Ko. You know, it's still going to end up with Ko if you uh, try the regular R16 move. So he goes here, and if uh, black, you know, pushes on both sides, and defense here. White can make a jump out here. Now black can play very, very aggressive and seal him off like this. But uh, even after this, white just uh, leaps back. And the best black can do is this. And white manages to make, but despite black's best efforts, uh, he manages to make life uh, acceptable life. Yeah, it's not exactly huge life, but uh, it does live. S14. When? For black? After S16. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a very fun one. No, I, I agree. Very, very good move to look at as well. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. So this is where it can get... Uh, oh, wait. Not 15. Wait. After S16, S14. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This uh, this can also get rather fun. Ah, is Q18 the move? So the question here is: Is he alive outright, or does White need Co? Frozen. Thank you. I know you're very, very strong. I appreciate your strength, but please let some of the other players answer. Thank you. <laughs> so as Frozen so kindly put for us, yes, White can actually just manage to live here. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so White can just manage to live. It looks like White's dead. But let's see what happens. Looks like Black's escaping. But then something really, really funny happens. And he plays this. And this is rather... Oh, wait. Move order. Move order. Okay. Move order is important. Move order is important. Suddenly this happens. 
And uh, now Black's in a bit of a dilemma. If uh, Black just tries and uh, seals him in, it doesn't work. White can uh, just manage to get himself out of here. So it, it's really, really fancy, actually, but it does work. Yeah, it, it's very scary. I agree. But he can just manage to make light. This is a very tricky move. S15 is another tricky move. Uh, designed to try and make uh, white scared and to kill white. There's actually a few different ways for white to play. One of the simplest ways is just to cut out like this, defend, and then black has a few different choices. This is usually the most common. And uh, then white can manage to play this fancy move. And make himself life. It's not the biggest life. I will... Uh, yeah, ta-da! <laughs> not the biggest life, but hey, look, you invaded the 3-3 point and lived. And his 3-3 point... Yeah, yeah, his uh, undynamic. <laughs> so, the main point being, R17 can live, but it's going to live very, very, very small, is the main point with R17. It can live, but very small. So make sure you're okay with your opponent getting a very, very strong wall all around your invasion. Yeah, exactly. Better than black and gold. Well, usually, because remember, black's going to be building a really big wall all around it. You know, all around on both sides, black will build a big wall. So you have to be aware of that and make sure that he doesn't make even more points with his new wall. So it's a very whole board, right, it's a very whole board situation that you have to judge, which is very difficult. All right, so let's look at another situation. We have uh, the star point with the long nice chip. Now, besides Frozen, who obviously knows the answers to all the problems here. Uh, anyone have any ideas? The 3-3 three, three invasion? <laughs> life Gote, Life Gote, surely white lives. Lies. Yes, 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 Frozen. Lives, lives, it dies. Ah, purple. Man, that's, that's, uh, that's hardcore. It deserves to die. Ah, that's a good question. So, well, remember, with the, the short knight's jump at R14, it's Ko for life. And this time, well, there, <laughs> there, there are a few very, very few, co there are a few very complex, just like you said, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not going to go into all of the very, very crazy variations that can happen here. Now, the, the simple variation is just this. And this is all pretty forced. I mean, there's not much uh, variation here. Now, some players will say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this move now," but this is very bad because there's no way that Black can stop this cut. This cut's gonna capture something, and there's nothing Black can do about it. So Black has to defend here. Now, a very, very common mistake that many, many, many players make as Black is to Tanuki here. And de depending on the whole board, sometimes you can, but Usually, black cannot tanuki here. Very important point. Yeah, usually you need something P15, P14. The, the point is something to make a, a Q, Q15 go away and to make it less threatening. Because if black fails to do that, white's going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only live once. I mean, except when you die and go. You don't really live. But, uh... <laughs> Right, so uh, white plays here. What is uh, what, what should black try and do to defend against it? Mm, T16, ah, it's a small, small difference. O16, yeah, yeah, O16 is uh, the right way for him to play. And then white will do this. And then depending on the board position, sometimes black can easily get safe with R13, the R13 group. But uh, sometimes he can't. So this really depends on the whole board position. You know, we only have this little corner played out. You know, who's strong in the right side? Is, does white have a really strong group around R10? Because, you know, if white does have a really strong group around R10, you know, black is uh, not going to be really happy with this result. Not at all. He's going to be very depressed. His very strong wall has become mincemeat. Yeah, it's not going to be pleasant. Now, this is another good move to know, actually, right here. Let's say... Black decides that he thinks that his P18 group is great. 
and he's going to continue his attack like this. So, what should white do to continue attacking the O17 group? We have a few, ooh, we have a debate and a few ideas. O16, we have P17, hug. Hug is a brilliant technique. Uh, let's see. N16. All right, a few different ideas. P17, then Atari, make a blob. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at each of these. So, this move isn't necessarily a terrible idea, but the problem is it's not as severe as, uh, as white could be. In many normal situations, this would be a great move. But in this particular one, it lets uh, black off kind of easily. I mean, on the one hand, black could actually just consider cutting directly. And, uh, well, that doesn't really work here. But, so, okay, doesn't quite work, never mind. But, uh, you know, in, in this situation, black can still manage to do this. Which isn't necessarily awful for white, but uh, black still manages to get out safely. So, now, the idea that everyone's very, very tempted to... Yes, Frozen? No, Frozen, wait. Wait till I finish, okay? Listen to Florpal, are you, are, thank you for... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Florpal. I appreciate it. You can give your thoughts on uh, T16 in a bit, okay? I promise. I swear to you. So, everyone likes... <laughs> so everyone likes to play this P16 move because, of course, you know, it's, oh, I'm going to turn black into a giant blob. But in this case, P7, P17 is a bad move. This is a bad move for white. Even though it, black has become a blob, white here has lost a critical, critical liberty at uh, P16. Yeah, he's burning his own liberties. And that, that opens him up to potential cutting by black. Right, he's too heavy. So even though it's very tempting to make him a blob like that, it's not the best way to play in this in this particular situation. Sometimes sometimes it's very good. So in this situation, this is the correct move because of snapback threat. And you force him to get here. But now here we have a more advanced move to find. And I'm, uh, I'm guessing most players... Well, yes, I know that you know the answer, Red. Thank you. But, you know, I was hoping someone who was not a Don player might uh, try and have a, a go first. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a, a slightly uh, non-intuitive move to find. Um, M16 isn't necessarily a terrible move here. In fact, it's perfectly playable. But uh, black will uh, probably end up doing... Uh, probably end up doing this. And uh, manage maybe to live inside. Well, no, he's not going to do that. Black will probably do this, and uh, you know maybe White can play outside and cut him and maybe kill it. But you know in the process, Black's gonna get a panuki from it. So I mean M16 isn't a terrible move at all, but it's not the best move. No, we have a test G here, which is very very good to know at M17. Now at first it looks like it's very weak because Black's just gonna go here. But now here, black has a brilliant counter, or white has a brilliant counter move here, uh, right at uh, n14, and n15, n15, yeah, 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 obviously, n15. And now black, of course, is very, very sad because this happens, and uh, black just isn't gonna end well here. He's just not. <laughs> I I just don't see many worlds in which this ends well for black. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those evil, sadistic moves that you don't really think about, and then you see it and say, like, oh, wow, what a great move. But, okay, Frozen, so you wanted to talk about T16, please. Uh, you have the attention of the room. T16, bad endgame for white here. Ah! Well, I mean, you, you have an argument here for endgame. That minus three points. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You, you have to play right, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, S16 works, but you have to know how to respond when uh, your opponent takes this move. Uh, it's uh, very important. Yeah. Yeah, S16 is usually slightly better, but uh, you have to know how to play afterwards. S16 uh, is Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
We're talking about 2.0 setup. So uh, where was I? We were uh, getting into this whole uh, Yosei lecture. Oh, actually another interesting point. The reason why it's usually better Yosei as long as you play right. So assuming uh, assuming Black plays the proper move, and now it's time for Yosei. This is a good question for uh, some of our players uh, who are close to the Dawn level. Uh, right, white, white can't T14, right. So it is now Black, and preferably our Dawn players could avoid answering this question. And uh, it's... Preferably, our Don players could avoid answering this question. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So as uh, as Red has kindly told us, uh, T eighteen. No, and funny, you're more than welcome to answer. Mm. So T eighteen is actually the proper move here. I know, I know, I know. Don't worry. Welcome to the Don Club. Welcome to the Don Club. It's uh, it's a good club to be in. So, uh, at first it looks like there's no problems, and, you know, white won't have any problems living, but, uh, what should black play here for best Yosei? Any ideas from our Q players? No, you guys are being really, really fancy. Just be as simple as humanly possible. Yep, there you go. Simple as humanly possible. T14. Now, it looks like, uh, now the, the key here is white cannot play this move. T15, remember, is a very bad move because it's dead. Because black's just going to do this and uh, then this and then he's dead. And uh, that's just not going to be pleasant, you know. He's going to have a really, really bad day after this. Why white no S18? When? Oh, in response. Yeah, wait, wait, should S18? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> then you're learning. That's, uh, that's good. So yeah, S18 is the proper move here. But uh, Black has a really, really cool Tessigy to play. So anyone who's not a Don player? Yes, you, you, you can answer funny. That's fine. Right. S16 is a very cool Tessigy here. Because White cannot play T15. Because it's self Atari, isn't it sadistic? I know, right? So let's say that white still says, oh, well, I'm going to capture it. Well, black can play this, and T15 is now Sente. <laughs> white now has to play some really, really loser move, like T19, to live. And so this is evil, fantastic Sente reduction. Alternatively, if uh, white just plays this move, then black can play this move, and white can get Sente. But uh, regardless, uh, white has gotten reduced. And black doesn't have to play T15 immediately if he doesn't want to. But white has clearly gotten reduced here. So T18 is hence the reason you S16. Yes. Going back to S16, S16 stops all this really, really nasty stuff, but you have to know the proper continuation or it can end very badly for you. Ah, S18 first, then. that's an excellent question. So uh, any ideas? What should, uh, what should black do here? Preferably uh, non-Don players. Ah, there, there we go. T14 right off the bat. Just transforms into that same old situation. <laughs> same exact situation. If uh, white tries this, you know, it's identical. 100%. If uh, white tries this, well, this is should be obvious that this is going to end very, very badly for white. If uh, white attempts this, still bad. So yeah, it, it basically ends the same way at the end of the day. But So this is a very good test. What I see constantly players do is they'll just play this move in Yosei, and then white will play here, and then black will play here, and white will play here, and this is very bad. This is a, what, a two to three point loss for uh, black in Yosei, and people just do it all the time, again and again, and it's a small thing, but it just adds up over time, and there are going to be countless games where you are just going to be so close, and there's no reason to make this kind of a mistake when there's an easy answer. But uh, I've spent enough time on uh, this particular one. So let's move on so we have enough time to uh, get to everything. Ah, so this is a good one to look at and one that's often overlooked. Uh, what, if, what happens if you have a double large knight's enclosure, which is actually more common than you'd think in uh, many, especially Q games. It's uh, a lot more common than you'd think. And uh, you find somewhere else to invade. The question is, 
does the three three work? Is it is it ko? Is it seki? Is it what what is it? Is it ko seki? Is it just life? We have a seki. We have a death. We have an alive. Wow, the whole uh, the whole spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> No, the word seki is a trick play. There, are, there aren't really any seki situations that I know of that easily come about from a tree tree. <laughs> so, okay, so black plays here now. White to play. S sixteen. Yep, S sixteen is the way to do it here. The reason being, if white tries to attempt normal living techniques like he does with the single large knight's jump. But let's see what happens. We have this normal variant. But now suddenly this N17 stone is here. And then black decides he's going to go for the kill. Well, if white tries to cut him here, black can just manage himself to become safe. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it, exactly. You know, uh, white is dead, and uh, black is alive. So white is very, 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 very sad here, and should probably resign the game. It's not that complicated. White is white's really dead. White's just really, really dead. White R18 at S18. R18 at S18. You can make Ko here. Yeah, Ko is certainly possible by doing this. Absolutely, you can make Ko. But uh, you can't live outright. It's Ko. I promise. It, it, it's Ko. T16. Okay. Oh, does this work? How interesting. Wait. Can you do that? No. You can't make life. Wait. How interesting. I'll be darned. Huh. Go figure. You can make life like that. Okay. Okay, so you can make itty itty bitty life. I'll be darned. Hmm. Okay, then what about this way? Hmm. Huh. You can live here. Well, there you go. I just, uh, I learned something. I learned something today. <laughs> Q19, T16, R18. Well, this will happen. Ah, wait. Ah, is this my, uh, no, I don't think this works. Yeah, I know it does, right? Hmm. I'll be darned. Yeah. It happens. So, okay, so you can make so you can make anybody life like that. Huh. Well, uh you learn something every day. <laughs> and this is why I am not a seven don yet, because I uh I miss some uh, problems in life and death. I'll be darned. So okay. White can indeed live tiny here. But uh Another way is much simpler usually is just to do this. And this can also make you live without any need for uh, insane fanciness. And makes very, very, very tiny life rather effectively. So, to make sure we have uh, time to get to the games, let's. Uh, Can't black S15? In what situation? Oh, in this case? Like right uh, right here? Ah. Oh. Sure, we can have a chat afterwards, Purple. If you like. Hmm, dangerous thing. I mean, you get this and maybe black can seal him like this. But uh, white can still live. Just barely by doing this. So, uh, doesn't really work. 
Well, better for black. Black's a little bit thin. I mean, there's a little bit of thinness here that you have to be careful with. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty similar for black at the end of the day. Pretty similar, I think. But uh, small potato stuff. So, uh, what was... Let's see, where was I? Okay. And then the final one before the pro games. We have this situation. And this is... Uh, so, what we have here in the upper left is a completed corner. Or upper upper right, yes. I, I, I don't know my left from my right, of course. So, we have in the upper right corner, this is a classic uh, completed corner for black. Black has a star point, a uh, knight's jump, and a uh, diagonal. And so in this case, of course, white it's usually very difficult for white to live directly with a 3-3 invasion with such a solid corner like this. But there's still something we can do. White can invade, and black will usually respond right here. And now we have an interesting uh, few choices for uh, black. Any uh, ideas, or white, any ideas for white to play here? We have a suggestion for S16, S15, 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 R16. Q18, bunch of different choices, very good, very good. Alright, these are a good, uh, <laughs> these are a good few choices to look at. So, A and D are, are very similar in that uh, they look to create a coincide. So with A, you can go like this, and the natural idea is to go here. But the problem playing this way is that uh, black doesn't have to respond at P18. Uh, black can play here, and this isn't very pleasant for uh, white. Uh, if white just defends, black's just going to kill him. And he kind of dies. So not exactly pleasant. Now, the other case, we have uh, this kind of situation. Now, this we actually have an interesting decision point for uh, black to consider. Um, I think black can probably manage to play this here. Yeah, S18 should should uh, work out alright. Same move. And uh, yeah, it's uh, basically impossible for white to really do much interesting in here. Well, 2-2 two, two magic. Yeah, white kind of died. So those two moves don't really work out that well. R16 is a, a good move to look at, but the problem is black can descend like this. And uh, this makes it really, really hard for white to do much inside. It's uh, White's probably not going to be able to live, or probably even make Co inside after uh, black gets this move. But the, the right answer here is the one we have left, which is S15, which is a fantastic move here. It uh, gives black a choice. If black plays S16, white just happily pulls back, and now black owes the corner another move. Right. Yeah, it's a fantastic technique. Black owes the corner another move. If black doesn't take a S17 for himself, white's going to take it. And this is a very, very sad day for black. His uh, beautiful corner has disappeared. Uh, not the happiest result. So uh, if, uh, however, let's say black plays the opposite result, or the opposite sequence, he can weaken whites outside, and sometimes if you can weaken whites outside enough, this can actually be a, a, a worthwhile variant. And then this will result. And you don't even need to make a co here. This is 100% uh, alive. There is Now the question is, how weak is white's center? And it depends on the rest of the board. You know, does white have a strong center group he can run to? Is P10 in imminent danger? And so making these kinds of judgments is uh, you know, a case-by-case -case situation, depending on the rest of the board. But the main point here is that the corner can't be killed. It is a uh, immortal corner. It uh, no matter how hard black tries, white can just squeeze out two eyes. So that was uh, the basics of the three three. Now we're going to talk about uh, a few more advanced things, and the Don players are more than welcome to uh, chime in on uh, these last few things. We're going to look at three professional games. Now these are uh, basically uh, how do how professionals. Yes, you're more than welcome to answer. How professionals attempt to kill Need the Stones Outside. Ah, 
Excellent question, Defunct. Excellent question. Yes, he does. Let's say you don't have that move. And you try the same technique. And then you try this. And then uh, this. And this. Now, white or black does not need to defend S14 now. Because there's no stone at uh, R13. So black can just uh, directly play... Uh, well, actually, that's not a good move. Black should directly just play this move. And kill him this way. Now, this, of course, is assuming that this cut does not work. We are assuming here that S14 can make it out safely, which is uh, pretty complex here, actually. But it, it, it all depends on this cut. Does this cut work? If this cut does work for white, then black cannot kill it. If this cut does not work, yeah, it, it's iffy here. No, I agree. I agree. It's, it's iffy here. So even here, white might be able to make uh, some kind of life doing this. Maybe. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it all depends on that cutting point. So there's still Aji inside this. So now we're going to look at a few professional games. These are a few more advanced techniques on uh, how to attempt to kill a 3-3 invasion because when normally you know a normal move wouldn't be able to kill it because we've seen how resilient it is at making codes and making all this stuff. Well, now we're going to see what happens when you have a professional who is just really, really, really interested in just wiping the 3-3 invasion off the face of the earth. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. Where is it? Uh, here we are. So, we have this situation here. Let's, uh, let's first take a second to uh, look at the game. We have uh, Black obtaining a corner in the upper right, uh, some center group that uh, has some Aji to it, and another group, and of course his main Moyo, in uh, the bottom right. And then we have White with a solid corner in the upper left, a uh, solid center group, potentially planning to attack uh, M16, the M16 group, depending on what happens. And uh, now, white is attempted to invade the R3 point. And black here, notice, remember what I was saying about uh, having additional stones strengthen you. So this here, we not only have a, a knight's enclosure, but it's being additionally strengthened by M3, which helps. And we have this very, very, uh, well, relatively tough wall on this other side. So the move you're about to see here is a uh, advanced attack that I would not recommend you play unless you really know what you're doing or until uh, you reach the dons at least I uh, also have great caution when attempting moves uh, when attempting to uh, play a move like this that's not a move I play lightly so Black's attempted kill move is uh, <laughs> is S5 which is an extremely uh, advanced and very 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 dangerous uh, attempt to kill white stone the idea behind it is when black's center is really, really strong, and he can play this way with the idea being instead of a normal move like R4, this move, if he needs to, potentially gives him a monkey jump all the way into T2, which is actually kind of interesting if uh, white doesn't defend the area. So, but this is very dangerous, as we're going to soon see. Yeah, magic monkey, exactly. So, in this case, White decides to play S4 to try and defend, but now here we're going to see some very interesting uh, magic go on. And we're going to see Q2. Instead of responding and protecting S5, Black is essentially saying that he is allowing White to escape into the center with the threat that he will refuse to allow White to make his second eye in the center. Absolutely refuse to allow it. So white's going to try and make black's shape thinner, and then go straight for the cut. And so the fight continues to pace. This is a viciously, viciously <laughs> complex fight that is uh, going to come here. So both sides have a... We, we could actually... I could have a... We could have a whole other hour lecture discussion on exactly why each of these fighting moves are chosen. Um, so I don't really have... We don't really have time for an ultra in-depth uh, analysis of this fight. But the main point being is that both of them are playing very, very vicious moves uh, to attempt to kill one another. Meanwhile, White has been able to make uh, some additional outside Aji because of his attempted invasion. And now we see something that's very common in professional games, but not very common in Q games, is that rather than the obvious move of T2, which would one would say, oh, look, that kills the corner. Instead... Black is totally ignoring that. 
he is allowing white to live if he wants because black believes that playing at the J3 area is even bigger than that entire corner. Um, so this is a very high level thinking that we're seeing very uh, big exchanges. That's a, a huge trade that black is considering now. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah, black's uh, counting well. So white will manage to live out. White gets outside, and then white uh, after taking this, white takes his t2 t2 move. It's it's just huge. So from this from uh, this vicious move, did black end up directly killing white's corner? No, he didn't. But uh, can we say it was a total failure? Well, that's that's a much more difficult question. Um, it caused a, a huge amount of results outside to happen. It caused uh, you know black to become a little uh, have get more stones in the center. It caused uh, white to form this uh, Q6 group, which may end up being captured. Uh, it's it's very difficult to say who necessarily ended up better, and that that's one of the reasons why we have to be so cautious about playing vicious moves like this. Is because they can just spawn into gigantic whole board fights, which totally warp the board. The the three three can get really really nasty. So due to time, uh, we're just going to go straight to the uh, second professional game. Where is the uh, first move? For that one. Ah, here we are. So, right now we have a similar situation. Uh, both sides have traded a. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, Merrick. So, right now we have a, a slightly different situation, but the same idea. Uh, both sides have been uh, fighting for territory. White has made a big, powerful moyo in the upper left, and black has determined that. Uh, he needs to make points there. If black can live at C17, it is very likely that white will probably lose on points. If, on the other hand, uh, black can, uh, if on the other hand, white can manage to kill him, white will probably end up winning. So let's see what happens. Well, we have the same initial move, and uh, even right after that, we have uh, a different second move. Now here we have uh, black trying another strategy, trying to stretch out his corner. See how uh, forceful White is in uh, attacking him. How vicious will White be in his attempt? So uh, White uh, seems to be wanting to kill it pretty badly. Now look at this. It seems that Black can make some uh, pretty tough shape here. But uh, now th this is a very interesting question. What should White do here? Any ideas? White to play? Should he just uh, fight the co-op with Black? Does he have a more vicious move? Ah, we have a suggestion for B19. Monkey, ah, everyone wants the monkey. Well, the correct answer is the monkey. <laughs> Black, uh, white takes a B19. <laughs> Which is really, really funny to think about, but that, that's the whole point behind it. So white tries to be fancy and slice Black in half. And Black just uh, defends with F18. Now this, I should note, is a very high dangerous strategy. Because you're essentially letting, white, or letting Black escape into the center. But White's assumption here is that, well, even if Black escapes into the center, it won't matter because uh, Black will die. And, uh, yeah, exactly. There's nowhere to run. Exactly. That's perfect. And, lo and behold, Black resigned uh, right here. Game ends. <laughs> White wins by resignation because of the E18 move. Very effective. Yeah. Killer monkey. Killer monkey. I agree. So then the final one we're going to see is a, a slightly different uh, move. If I can find where the first move is. One moment. Um, where is that damn move? Mm, uh, where is it? I'm going to have to play through. So, uh, lots of fun moves here we could debate and discuss, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to try and uh, find the 3-3 three, three move that we're focusing on. Lots of uh, very complex fighting beforehand. As soon as I find it. Ah, we're nearing it. And... Yeah, because I don't know the exact starting move. That's why I don't shift click. Oh, the shift click, of course. I'm stupid. Duh. Obviously, the shift click works. Anyway. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. My computer is being stupid, though, and it's not letting it work for some reason. I don't know why. But it, ah, here we are. Okay. So, black started off with a weird move at uh, D17. But it reverts to here. We have uh, this move. It reverts to uh, black invading at the 3 3. And uh, black uh, extending to D17. And then white plays E18. This is, uh, this is another move that uh, I would not recommend you uh, play unless you really, really know what you're doing. And you really, really have... I know, it's, it's, it's so much fun. And you really have strength all around it. So if we look in this case, you know, white has these huge walls all around, even though black has some Aji still with his, his D14 stones, which uh, aren't uh, 100... Uh, there's still some floating Aji with those. So white isn't all strength here. This is, this is something of a, almost a desperation move. White is uh, essentially gambling the game on uh, killing this black corner with E18. He is gambling the game that there is nothing black can do to make life in this area because white has to, because white believes that he will lose on points if he does not do this. Well, right, it's, it's a forced gamble. Right. It's, so it's not a gamble. It's a forced gamble. It's, it's play this or lose. So, yeah, you can... Uh, it, it, you, well, let's not argue semantics. So first, uh, black actually decides to uh, play a little more of the co-fight they ignore for a little bit, which I find very interesting. Then they come right back to it. And uh, black plays e17. And they fight a co-fight alongside this, which I just find really, really funny. Here they are fighting this really complex co. All while at the same time, this whole the, the entire upper left is uh, floating in the balance. I mean, I can't even calculate the number of points if uh, black lives versus black dies. Is what, 40 points, 50 points? total in terms of the stones that might live, the stones that might die, it's, it's monstrous. And yet they're also fighting this lower right co simultaneously, playing threats, ignoring threats, all sorts of insanity. So now black is being really, uh, really fancy here. And um, <laughs> this is some really complicated reading. I, I, would, uh, I would be lying if I told you that I could... Uh, read out uh, every single move here and uh, tell you why exactly C15 is the absolutely best move. Oh, I, I do use the word fancy a lot, but this is fancy. This is not your average go technique. And uh, so here, white has essentially determined that uh, black has lived. And he has. There's really nothing white can do here to uh, really kill black. So, yeah, black is uh, pretty happy. I mean, if white attempts this, Black is uh, just going to do this. Or even actually, no, forget that. Just even be simpler and do this. And uh, now black lives uh, unconditionally. There is uh, no way to kill. So white uh, bet the game that E18 would work. And white failed in his bet. And uh, this is the result of that failure. Even this way, it uh, still works. Black can just ladder those stones. Yeah, yum, I know. So, uh, this concludes the 3-3 uh, lecture. The main thing to remember about the 3-3 is that there is a load of Aji with it. The key is uh, learning how to use that Aji. Um, whether the 4-4 is alone, whether it has help from a knight's jump, whether it has help from a single one-space jump, or what have you. It's a... Uh, Right, that, that could be a whole point for a separate lecture. Yeah, the key is the 4-4 has a 3-3 invasion. And even after you defend it with additional stones, it still may have Aji. And there's a lot of Aji. A lot of it is very subtle. Uh, I'm still learning about it, frankly, myself. And I, I can't claim that I'm an absolute expert on the 3-3. But uh, the main point being is there's more than just uh, a few generic Joseki to know. There is a large amount of Aji. And also, there's a, you know, there are even ways to kill it. If you're willing to gamble the game, there are ways to kill it, but you really have to know what you're doing. And I would strongly recommend anyone uh, not attempt to uh, kill a 3-3. Go back to the S5 one. Which one was that? Was that the, the first pro game? S51, what was that? Uh, this one?
Yeah, this one is uh, <laughs> this one's kind of interesting to determine. Uh, S5, S4, R2. No, it was uh, Q2. Q2 was the move. Or are you asking what if R2? Like uh, like this? Hmm. Um, I would imagine just this probably. And then if uh, black attempts this, I suppose black could connect under. But uh, mm, yeah, easily said. Uh, not as easy to do. Um, maybe a little tricky to uh, kill him. There also might be better variations. <laughs> White is no longer a 3-3 group. Right. So, yeah, I would uh, recommend extreme, extreme caution before ever attempting a move like S5 unless you're just... Unless you have decided in your head that, uh, you know, if I don't kill this 3-3 invasion, the game is over and there is no point in me playing the game any longer. And uh, if you make that decision, then, you know, if, if it's literally you're willing to throw the game away on it, then do it. But, uh... Well, does black lose? Oh, and at the end, the end result of the game? Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, black wins by resignation. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, black won this game by uh, resignation. So we can say that his S5 move was a success. <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes that we've seen it succeed, we've seen it fail. But uh, yeah, it's it's a move. You're just uh, it's a it's, honestly it's a ballsy move because you're you're gambling the game on it. But enough on that. Uh, anyway, this was a lecture on the three three point. Um, if you have any ideas for next week, uh, please uh, throw me a, a message. More than happy to uh, look for uh, new ideas. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it and uh, hope to see you all uh, next week. But until then, uh, adios. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for coming.